Hello there sexy PlayStation gamers and welcome back to another pure PlayStation video review. And yes, it's the big one, Final Fantasy VII Remake on PS4. It's finally out. You've no doubt already played it. If you haven't, this review is for you. It isn't often a game comes along that you can sit and play with a smile on your face the whole time. Final Fantasy VII is one of those games. When the Final Fantasy VII Remake was announced, I had mixed feelings. For me, Final Fantasy VII is, without a doubt, one of the very first games I fell in love with. And as a Brit, I don't use that word very often. In the 25 or so years since the original first released, I've completed it multiple times and I own it on every console I currently have. My excitement and my expectations were both set to high. The reason I start with this in a review of a new game is to emphasise one point and one point only. The bar was set very, very, very high for this game. I'm a fan of the original first and foremost, and this recent fascination with remakes and remasters and re-releases and re-releases of remasters that have been remade, some of them good, some of them bad, it had me worried, just as much as the next guy. I wanted this to be good in a way that stays true to one of the most amazing games of any generation. So, it is with great satisfaction and relief that I can say, believe the hype! Square Enix has hit it out of the park, updating and recreating Final Fantasy VII for a modern audience. To put it simply, Final Fantasy VII Remake is a pure joy to play from start to finish with a fleshed out story that includes relevant and meaningful additions that all serve to stretch that initial opening Midgar sequence into a fully fleshed out Final Fantasy game. If you've played the demo or seen the trailers, and come on who hasn't, you'll know that Final Fantasy VII Remake starts in the same way, with our spiky haired hero Cloud Strife making a very showy entrance as he jumps from the roof of a train to begin his assault on Mako Reactor 1. This is the first of many iconic moments that have been recreated for a modern audience, and if you're coming here with the hope of spotting as many nods and references as possible, you won't be disappointed. The first thing that jumps out is that the graphics absolutely shine, and it's a strange sensation seeing something that has lived in my imagination for so long brought into such a sharp focus. One of the many joys of the original Final Fantasy VII was filling in some of the blanks, that the limitations of the hardware at the time created. And now Final Fantasy VII Remake fills in those blanks and then some. The opening cinematic sets out to prove this point, as it immediately switches to a playable sequence without any noticeable transition. By retelling the original story, Square Enix caters both to old and new fans alike, keeping the main beats of the original game but told in a new way adding more information and relevance, fleshing out the nuances of a story that at this point is over 20 years old, and anyone with any interest in gaming probably already knows. It's common knowledge, like 66, the winning team, Freddie Mercury and Queen. Hey yo! That's my point. <laughs> Not sorry. Seeing minor members, now with more to do, like Biggs, Wedge and Jesse, is a welcome addition and it adds emotional depth and connection to characters who were, back in the past, little more than bit players. And it's here that Remake shines. Square Enix has realised this, and the opening chapters work hard to solidify this emotional connection. Final Fantasy VII Remake has a fully voiced cast, and, overlooking the odd joke that doesn't quite land, they flesh out the characters in meaningful ways. Without going into any spoilers, an additional mission with Jesse early on socks this home, adding background information that just wasn't there before, while at the same time giving more weight to her story. As with most JRPGs, managing items and upgrades is an important part of getting the most from Final Fantasy VII Remake. Materia, the crystallised orbs of Mako, that, when slotted into equipment, grants you magical abilities, makes a triumphant return here. Just as you level up your characters with experience earned during battles, you also earn AP, which levels up your equipped materia, giving access to new and more powerful spells and abilities. Equipped materia is visible and glows on weapons outside of battle, which I thought was a nice little touch. Leveling up is still done through battle, and it's here that some of the biggest changes have been made. 
Instead of relying on a more turn-based system, Final Fantasy VII takes a more action-oriented approach. At first, I was a little unsure of this change, but once I got the hang of switching up my abilities and using my party to the best of their ability, I enjoyed this approach. It's during battle that you take control of your main character. You attack with a square button. Simple. <laughs> As time passes, a gauge will fill, which can be sped up by landing successful attacks. Filling this gauge gives you access to the use of your spells and abilities, and time slows down to a crawl as you browse the pop-up menu, trying to decide on the best approach to each battle. It does take a little bit of getting used to, but once you've got the hang of it, the system works really well, and using your abilities and switching between the members in your party on the fly is done with ease. Battles themselves are a stunning spectacle. Magic has now become a feast for the eyes as flames swirl around your target, landing with a satisfying sizzle. Summons make a return and, once summoned, will fight alongside you on the battlefield, dealing additional damage for the limited time that they appear. Square Enix has, has done a great job of making the rewards from each battle worth it, and I find myself going out of my way to look for fights. Sorry mum! To level up my characters and materia so that they were as powerful as possible. It's not just characters and materia that can be upgraded. Now, weapons have cores that give you access to new abilities, making you stronger as you progress. This makes weapons much, much more meaningful than they once were. And I found I would revisit older weapons that I had once abandoned to upgrade them and get them upgraded and boost them and get my strength to max. I enjoyed the many hours of tinkering with weapons and equipment as I tried to find my most powerful build. But for some, I can see this being a bit of a turn. Final Fantasy VII Remake is equal parts swinging an oversized sword at enemies, as it is scrolling through menus and scrutinizing stats to ensure you're ready for whatever lies around the next corner. In a time when remasters and remakes are the new norms, Final Fantasy VII Remake is a truly great example of what can be done when a game is lovingly reinvented. Final Fantasy VII takes what was loved about the original and extends and expands upon its many parts. While these additions might not be for everyone, there was rarely a minute that I played where I wasn't sat there with a massive grin on my face. Square Enix has created a game that walks a fine balance between being a nostalgic trip down memory lane and exciting and fun to play. And as a huge fan of the original, I say that with a massive sigh of relief. My only complaint then is that I now have to wait for part two before I can continue the story. Hmm. And that brings us to the end of our review. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you didn't, tough. <laughs> if you did enjoy it though, maybe hit the like and subscribe button down below and we'll try and keep you, you know, full of stuff to watch and listen to and criticize if that's your thing. Until next time, bye.